Welcome to the second video in the special relativity topic. In this video we will be looking at the Michelson-Morley experiment. So before we begin, just a short recap on where we were. So we'd found that both Newton and Maxwell couldn't be right using the standard Galilean transform. So we come to the conclusion that we've got something wrong. So essentially, there was something wrong with the current theories and the current laws of physics, and we needed a new explanation. And one of the most popular theories put forward was the theory of the ether. So what the ether theory said was that there was no such thing as a vacuum. There's no such thing as empty space. Instead, uh, in between everything, there is a substance called the ether. So distances and spaces as vast as outer space, as well as down to as tiny as in between the atoms and in between the electrons. It said that everything in this universe is moving through the ether rather than through vacuum. And so therefore everything is moving with respect to this ether. And what that meant is that we're never measuring the speed of light relative to a vacuum, but we're measuring the speed of light relative to the ether. And that meant that it was no longer Maxwell versus Newton, but that we could get Maxwell and Newton's theories to agree. And so everything was right with the world. And more importantly, it gave us a way that we could test it, that we could test to see whether Maxwell or Newton or both were correct. So we have our Earth spinning through space. And by this theory, our Earth was actually spinning through the other. So not only is it rotating with respect to the other, but it's also moving through the other as it moves around the sun. So if we just pick some random point on the Earth's surface, the other will be moving past that point at some velocity v. Because the Earth is rotating on its axis and it's spinning around the sun on a very similar axis, then the velocity of that other is much larger in one direction, so in the direction parallel than it is perpendicular. And what that means is if we measured the motion of an object perpendicular to the velocity of the other, it would be very different to the motion of that same object, but moving parallel to the other. They would have different relative velocities. And this is the basis of the Michelson and Morley experiment. What they successfully did was to measure the speed of light in these two directions. So they measured the speed of light perpendicular and parallel to the other. And over the next few slides, we'll look at what that tells us. So rather than jump straight into their experiment, I am going to propose that we start uh, with a more familiar problem. So we have a river flowing with a velocity v downstream, and we have a jetty. And we're having a boat race, except that it's a slightly different boat race than normal. We have our blue boat, which is traveling downstream parallel to the shore, to some marker point and coming back. And we have our orange boat, which is traveling to a point directly opposite its starting point on the other bank. Both boats travel a distance d, and both boats are traveling at a velocity relative to the water of c meters per second. We want to know which boat wins the race. So we want to know the time that each boat takes. And this is just a relative motion problem. So. We know that boat one, our blue boat, will take time one, which is equal to the total distance it travels, divided by its velocity relative to the ground. And likewise for boat two. So we know the distance, so the first thing we need, need to be able to find is the velocity of each of these boats relative to the ground. So using our relative velocity equation, we know that the velocity of the boat relative to the water is equal to the velocity of the boat minus the velocity of the water. And that gives us our equation for the velocity of the boat. We know the velocity of the boat relative to the water in both cases is c, and we know that the velocity of the water in both cases is v. What changes between the two cases is the direction of each of those velocities. So we have a two-dimensional vector addition problem. We'll start with boat 1 because it's the simpler case, and we'll look at its outbound leg. So on its outbound leg it's traveling downstream in the same direction as the velocity. So we have the velocity v of the water plus the velocity of the boat relative to the water, which is c. And that gives us our resultant vector, c plus v. So the velocity of our boat relative to the ground on its outbound leg is c plus v, which gives us a time of the outbound leg of d divided by 
C plus B. And we'll do the same for its inbound leg. So once again, we add our two velocities to find our resultant. And that gives us that the velocity of the boat relative to the ground on the inbound leg is equal to C minus V. Combining those two results, we find that the total time taken for the boat to do its round trip is equal to 2D divided by C times 1 minus V squared on C squared. And now we have to do the same for our second boat. And we'll start with its outbound leg. So we know that this boat is aiming for a point directly opposite the river, and we know the river is heading to the right. So that means we know we have to send our boat off uh, in a direction at some angle upstream. And we know the magnitude of that is C. To that, we add the velocity of the water, and that gives us our resultant, the velocity of the boat, is equal to the square root of C squared minus V squared. Again, using our equation for time, we find that our time on the outbound leg is that distance d divided by our, divided by the velocity of the boat relative to the ground. And doing the same in our inbound leg, we know that we need to aim our boat slightly at some angle upstream, and we add that to the velocity of the water, and that gives us our velocity of our boat equal to the square root of c squared minus v squared again. So the total time taken for the orange boat to cross the river and come back is equal to 2d divided by the square root of c squared minus v squared. So we have the race times now, the total times for each of our boats. And we're interested in finding the difference. So these are fairly nasty expressions to deal with. So what we can do is we can use the binomial expansion. And that tells us that our time for boat 1 can be expanded as such, and our time for boat 2 looks like this. So to find which boat 1, all we need to do is to take the difference between the two times. And in doing that, we find that our time difference is approximately equal to the distance, one way, times the velocity of the river squared, divided by the velocity of the boat relative to the water, cubed. And we can see from this expression that the difference in time between the two boats is always positive. So that means if the river is moving at any velocity at all, the boats will always take different times to return. So we will always have a positive non-zero delta t. And this is exactly the experiment that Michelson and Molly did. So they took instead of the river, we have the ever with the velocity v. And what they did was they took a light beam and they split it. So they had exactly the same light beam starting at exactly the same time and traveling exactly the same distance. They sent one light beam perpendicular to the other and reflected it with a mirror so it returned to its starting point and they sent the second light beam parallel to the other. And what they were hoping to find was exactly what we saw in the last slide. So they were hoping to find that this change in time, the difference in time that it took the two light beams to return was greater than zero. And from that, they could conclude that uh, if it was greater than zero, then the earth was moving with some velocity relative to the other. And from the magnitude of that difference, they could tell how fast the earth was moving relative to the other. So what they found was that the change in time was within the error margin. And what that meant was that we were back where we started. So Newton and Maxwell cannot both be right, and we're still looking for a new explanation.